Years ago in a tiny village, a man emerged from a split catacomb upon the grounds trembling, the unnamed man claimed to be the ruler of the land of gold, a country fabled to have prospered greatly before disappearing a thousand years ago. However according to the man's claims, the land's disappearance was due to the curse of a mad mage who cast a spell to confine the land and its subjects into the underground, therefore before turning to dust and blowing away into the wind, the man promises to pass down the golden land to whoever destroys the mage. In the present day when the land of the gold has become only a myth again, Laos and his dungeon raiding party face off against the mighty red dragon, during the battle the warrior remains distracted by thoughts of food and hunger, as a result he fails to see a blow coming his way, leading his sister Fallon to shield his body with her own. Thus the girl becomes the dragon's prey, trapped in its mouth, as the realization of his team's defeat dawns upon Laos, nevertheless Fallon uses a spell to transport her friends out of the dungeon and to a safe meadow, while Laos and his friends awake safe and sound, they quickly realize Fallon's spell failed to save herself. Further bad news arrives when Chilchuk informs the party that two other team members have decided to quit to join a better, more lucrative team of dungeon raiders, Laos vows to save his sister but stops by the village for a meal first, only while at the village, Laos realizes that his rescue mission is bound to fail since he doesn't have any supplies. The party was already broke and they had lost most of their belongings while fighting the dragon, although Laos attempts to convince Marcel and Chilchuk to quit as well so he can sell their gear and gain the money, the two members insist on joining Laos in this new quest, knowing he would have more of a chance to save Fallon with them. They prepare to confront the dungeons, only Laos convinces the other two to forego food supplies since they can rely on the ecosystem within the dungeon to feed themselves, Marcel is immediately against the idea, unenthusiastic about eating monsters. However given their situation the party doesn't have other options, besides Laos reminds them plenty of people banished to the dungeons already survive on monsters, early into the journey the team encounters one giant walking mushroom monster easily slain, consequently Laos excitedly decides to prepare for their first meal. Procuring a dungeon monster gourmet guide, Laos ensures the mushroom is edible much to Marcel and Chilchuk's chagrin, Afterward the trio enters the merchant's catacombs within the dungeons bustling with villagers and warriors, upon catching another monster a giant scorpion, and expressing similar enthusiasm to consume it. Laois sheepishly admits that eating monsters has always been a fantasy of his, however after preparing the two monsters in boiling water, Laos learns both dishes taste incredibly bad, his heaving attracts the attention of a nearby dwarf warrior who offers to teach him the right way to consume such monsters. After gathering more ingredients and using some of his own, the dwarf Senshi prepares a delicious hot pot that even Marcel can't turn down. Senshi introduces himself as another monster cuisine enthusiast who has been studying the art for a decade. Therefore Senshi decides to join Laos in his quest when he learns his sister was abducted by the red dragon. After all Senshi reveals he's always wanted to eat a red dragon, thus the group proceeds to the next levels of the dungeons, a lush green forest ripe with plants and fruits, albeit carnivorous ones. The party's next meal comes from different plants that they have to fight beforehand, and Senshi prepares a monster plant tart, another surprisingly mouth-watering delicacy, Marcel still has reservations about eating monsters and Laos' obsession with it still remains disarming. Nonetheless the team at least realizes they won't have to starve themselves in their quest to save Fallon and even get some delicious if weird food out of it, still all three remain unsure if they'd be comfortable feasting on a human-eating dragon. Marcel waking up from a nightmare and learning that another party's cooking a delightful meal nearby, Senshi suggests they hunt a beast that's high in fat, they stumble upon a nearby basilisk nest littered with fresh eggs, suddenly Laos hears a basilisk nearby and tells the others to hide, Laos Chilchuk and Senshi hide, leaving Marcel behind with the basilisk's egg. After chasing members from another party, the basilisk notices Marcel has one of its eggs in her hand, they observe Marcel and the basilisk tussle for a while, through clever planning Laos and Senshi defeat the basilisk, Laos comforts the two adventurers the basilisk attacked, he learns one of them got poisoned, Marcel tells Laos Senshi has an antidote. Instead of giving the male party member the antidote alt-right, Senshi mixes it in with a new basilisk-themed dish, once completed Marcel feeds the male adventurer the dish, 
Then Senshi hands everyone portions of a basilisk-themed dish to try, everyone including Marcel, enjoys it. After eating Marcel uses a healing spell on the male party member to help him recover from his injuries, the male adventurer asks Leos and the others for cooking tips, Senshi gives them several tips, then the crew continue their journey, Leos hopes they can reach the third floor soon. He and Chilchuk discuss alternate pathways they can try to reach their destination swifter, Marcel tries assisting them because she wants to prove she's not a burden to her group, the boys agree to take a path with less monstrous threats, Senshi suggests stocking up on vegetables before going through with this plan. He informs the others that a mandrake colony's nearby and Marcel's thrilled about it, they visit the colony's location and Marcel gives her allies insight into the mandrake's abilities, she hatches a plan that'll allow them to retrieve the mandrakes without causing a ruckus but Chilchuk finds her plan insufficient. Leos suggests an alternative plan but Marcel's unsure about it, then Senshi pulls at the mandrake freaking Marcel out, Senshi offers a better solution to their mandrake dilemma, even though Marcel's not fond of it, Leos and Chilchuk side with Senshi due to him being more experienced than Marcel. Upset over her friend's lack of trust in her, Marcel goes through with her former plan, instead of using a dog she opts for a big bat, although Marcel successfully nabs a mandrake she's affected by its abilities, Leos and Chichuk interrogate Marcel about her actions, Marcel explains why she went through with this risky scheme. Leos and Chilchuk ensure Marcel that she's an important party member, once they've settled in, Senshi observes the mandrake Marcel nabbed and compares it to the one he retrieved earlier, he makes a meal out of both mandrakes and lets Leos and Chilchuk taste them, Chilchuk and Leos find Marcel's mandrake dish satisfying. Senshi praises Marcel for her effort, later they find themselves at the bottom of a tower-like structure, Chilchuk uncovers a secret pathway and Senshi's surprised by his skills, he leads our heroes through this undiscovered location, however Senshi steps out of line, resulting in one of the area's traps activating near Chilchuk. Chilchuk scolds Senshi for his actions angering Senshi, after activating numerous traps out of spite, Senshi tells our group he wants to make tempura for lunch today, Chilchuk and Senshi make a deal, in exchange for the oil traps location Senshi must follow Chilchuk's orders concerning traps. Chilchuk leads our heroes to the oil traps location and pulls a lever to activate it, with Senshi's help they obtain the oil, Senshi tasks Chilchuk with using this area's traps to help him cook his cakeage meal, while eating Senshi praises Chilchuk for his trap manipulation skills and ponders what life will be like when he inevitably departs from Leos's group. Chilchuk promises to teach Senshi about traps before that time comes and thanks Senshi for teaching him how to cook. Upon entering another area of dungeon Leos realizes the decorative item on his sword guard is missing, though he could care less if he lost it or not, Leos tells the others the item serves as a memento of some kind, this triggers Leos to recall events when he was a beginner adventurer who joined a gold peeling crew party. During this time Leos and his former party enter a castle and discover a room full of stationary knights called Living Armor, each armor harbors the same sword guard Leos rambled on about in the present, suddenly one of the armor kills one of Leos's party members, enticing Leos to retaliate. Despite using the armor's weapons against it, the armor ended up killing Leos during that expedition, in the present Leos tells Marcel he lost the fight but walked away with the emblem as a reward, Leos ponders what the armor tastes like and asks Senshi how he'd prepare an armor-themed dish. Senshi tells Leos that the armor's metallic nature makes them inedible which upsets Leos, our heroes continue exploring the area and run into the same armor from Leos's gold peeling days, Senshi and Leos put up a decent effort against the armor but Marcel realizes they're blocking their path. She suggests that she and her allies retreat for now. After escaping Leos wonders if a magic user's controlling the armor since they're more hostile than normal, Leos develops a strategy that will help them resume their journey, while Marcel Chilchik and Senshi combat the armor, Leos makes his way to the door the armor were guarding earlier, opens it and enters the new room. Leos spots a lion-themed armor in the distance and knows he'll need to combat this warrior alone, while fighting Leos notices the lion-themed armor has an egg case on its shield, indicating that it's protecting a creature, after connecting the armor's origins to their supposed goals, Leos indicates the armor are acting on their own accord. In conclusion Leos believes the armor have weaknesses and are edible beings, while his comrades struggle to stop the armor, 
Laos ponders a way to defeat them for good, he believes it's best to deduce what type of creature the armor are, since he can't match the lion-themed armor's strength, Laos attacks its shield to catch it off guard. Laos successfully grabs the armor's helmet and sticks his broken sword inside it, a mollusk pops out, signaling to Laos that multiple mollusks are hidden inside each armor, Laos grabs the lion-themed armor's shield, returns to his allies and slides it across the floor. The armor attacks Marcel and the others flee toward it, allowing Marcel and her friends to head to the room Laos resides in, Laos shows Marcel and the others that the armor are being controlled by mollusks, he explains how the mollusks operate the armor, Laos asks Senshi if he can make a meal out of the mollusks. Senshi says he's never made a meal from mollusks before but isn't afraid to try, which excites Laos and angers Marcel, Senshi makes three dishes out of these new ingredients and hands one of them to Laos, even he's nervous about trying the dish and wants Laos to eat it first, Laos enjoys the dish which convinces the others to give the other meals a try. After eating Laos shares a theory with the others about the mollusks and the metal husks they inhabit, Laos takes the lion-themed armor's sword and notices a mollusk embedded inside it, he promises Marcel it isn't cursed and sheets it. Laos and his party wandering the third basement floor of a dungeon, they reach a new area and Laos suggests they go left instead of right due to a golem's intuition. Senshi says he's interested in the golem's bodies and shows them his base. Senshi mentions the third floor contains a few edible creatures. He argues that golems are valuable since they're high in nutrition and maintain appropriate temperature and humidity, Chilchik realizes Senshi's using them for gardening purposes and Senshi explains why that's not a bad idea, Senshi leads Marcel and the others to a lair filled with golems. Senshi defeats each golem without his friend's aid, the golems turn into mush and Senshi tells his comrades to harvest the golems' vegetables, after harvesting Marcel discovers Senshi was the one who planted the golems in this area, which gave him insight into where to find their cores, she tells Senshi it's illegal to activate a magical creature without permission. Marcel leaves for a minute to use the restroom, Senshi uses the opportunity to gather some soil and bury his golems, Laos commends Senshi for showing the golems proper care and asks him if he finds his lifestyle challenging. Senshi says he commits these acts out of enjoyment and doesn't find his lifestyle difficult. Marcel returns and we see everyone partaking in food prep, Everyone digs into the golem-inspired dish and adores it, after eating Senshi leaves to use the bathroom and Marcel shares her fondness for this floor's bathroom cleanliness and decorum. They see Senshi is collecting feces and urine and carrying them to the chamber pots to use it as fertilizers, after handling his task we see Senshi and the others traveling somewhere while holding various vegetables, Marcel asks him what he plans to do with the vegetables. Senshi says he usually sells them to wandering travelers on lower floors. Chilchik suggests they should trade them to this floor's merchants for nice rewards, they visit a diner and confront a short merchant about trading their vegetables, the merchant tells them to leave because he only trades in gold coins, suddenly a group of orcs arrive and start killing the diner's customers, turns out these orcs are the Senshi's cutomer from lower floors. The orcs reveal the red dragon appeared in their settlement so they travel to this floor to seek shelter, while the orc commander's army gathers materials from the diner, he confronts Senshi and asks him to share his crops with him, the orc commander places all of them inside a cage with a few chickens at his settlement. Senshi asks him to hand him some ingredients so he can make everyone some bread, the orc asks Laos what he plans to do if he gains control over this entire kingdom, Laos doesn't know resulting in the orc commander comparing him to other greedy adventurers he's stumbled upon. Senshi eventually finishes the bread dish. The orc commander tells him they're not allowed to eat the bread, however the orc commander's son asks him why, this persuades the orc commander to tell the other orcs to prepare meals for Marcel and the others, Marcel compliments the orcs for making them a lovely meal, Laos confronts the commander about his question to him earlier. Laos confirms he wants to travel to the dungeon's depths to save his sister and defeat the red dragon, the orc commander grabs a map and shows Laos and his friends where they can find the red dragon, Laos says he'll ponder the orc's words about becoming this area's king, after enjoying their meal with the orcs they continuing their quest. Kabru and his party eating food at a diner, a stranger stops by their table and chats with Kabru about other parties, he questions Kabru if his party will be the ones to defeat the dungeon's magician, 
Cabras says he doubts it and one of his comrades named Rin finds his comments appalling, Rin tells Kabru he should have been more confident in the discussion. She believes they will defeat the dungeon's magician, Kabra tells Rin it's better to show people like that gentleman they can accomplish the task rather than say they can, after gathering tools food and water, our new heroes enter the dungeon and slay a few monsters, Rin urges Kabru that they should tread the dungeon carefully. Mikbel one of their members finds an interesting box containing gold and jewelry which catches Kabru's eye. Kabru tells his team they should depart for today, later Chilchik and the others notice Kabru and his team lying on the ground, Laos notices they've sustained no injuries and questions if a ghost attacked them. Chilchik knows the corpse retriever will gather Kabru and his friend's belongings so he feels it's necessary to take their things. Before he does so Laos's sword acts up and he questions why, Laos draws his sword and the gold coins and jewelry turn out to be creepy insects called treasure bugs, startled by this discovery Marcel uses a stunning spell on the treasure bugs. Marcel's disgusted when she notices Senshi sorting out the treasure bugs because she knows he wants to make a meal with them, afterwards Senshi makes a dish with the good treasure bugs and serves it to everyone. While eating Laos asks Chilchik to give him one of the gold coin snacks. Then Laos puts the gold coin near his sword to see if it acts up, the sword reacts to the gold coin, Chilchik throws away the inedible treasure bugs and Senshi reveals their real gems, this frustrates Chilchik and Marcel because they could have used those treasure bugs for monetary purposes, Laos drops one of the treasure bug sandwiches and tries to retrieve it, suddenly a dungeon ghost arises and tries to freeze Laos, Marcel saves Laos but his screams attract more ghosts, Laos asks Marcel if she has any spells that aren't of the flashy variety, but Marcel says she's not as advanced in the magic arts as Fallon is. Chilchuk gives Senshi a brief recap of Fallon's ghost warding magic, followed by a flashback, Fallon implants one of her spells on Marcel and tells her this should prevent ghosts from harming her. A possessed adventurer heads their way, before one of their allies attacks it, Fallon hugs the adventurer and kindly asks the ghost to leave its body, the ghost complies and departs, in the present Marcel's thinking about resorting to violent measures to defeat any ghosts that'll harm her or the others. Chilchik thinks it's a bad idea and the two bicker about how she should handle the ghosts, Laos, and the others head somewhere and Senshi develops holy water that'll ward off the ghosts, several ghosts arrive and start freezing Chilchik Laos and Marcel. Thankfully Senshi uses his holy water weapon to make the ghosts disperse which frees Laos Marcel and Chilchik from their grasp, Laos tells the others they should all step up to the plate, as it's something Fallon would have wanted them to do, Laos approaches Senshi and asks him to let him help him ward the ghosts off. Laos uses Senshi's weapon to defeat the remaining ghosts, Senshi praises Laos and realizes he made ice cream, Everyone indulges in the dish and finds it tasty, Laos brings up Fallon distastefully causing Marcel Senshi and Chilchik to confront him about it, Laos wishes Fallon was here to clarify what he meant with his words. Chilchik attempting to unlock a door, then Marcel Senshi and the other stomachs start growling and Senshi reminds Laos that they only have treasure bugs in their inventory, Senshi suggests they head to the dungeon's fourth floor immediately to stock up on food, Chilchik opens the door and our heroes enter a dining hall area. Our heroes search the place and stumble upon a painting, the painting turns out to be a monster called a living painting and attempts to harm Laos, Marcel saves him, she and Chilchik yell at Laos because he wants the living painting to absorb him so he can nab the fruit depicted in it. Laos convinces Chilchik and Marcel to let him get absorbed by the living painting because he argues he can win against the person portrayed in it. Laos leaps into the painting and meets a maid, before he combats her the servant confuses Laos to be her queen and king's palace guard. She gives Laos a fruit basket and tells him to follow her, Laos observes the king and queen comforting their child and this makes him feel uncomfortable, Laos pulls the rope enticing Senshi and the others to reel him back to their location, Laos tells his comrades he failed to eat the food because the king and queen were ruining the mood. Chilchik and the others lead Laos to another painting, Chilchik finds this one's atmosphere appealing so Laos leaps into it, Laos learns that Prince Delgal the baby who was being comforted by the king and queen in the prior painting, resides in this one and is all grown up, before Laos takes a bite of some chicken, Delgal's father falls ill, Laos finds this situation awkward and suggests grabbing food and escaping, 
Marcel and the others pull Laos back to the real world, Laos returns but realizes he can't bring living painting food with him, Laos jumps into another painting and plans to eat that world's food. Before he digs in he notices Delbel's inheriting his parents' kingdom, afterward Laos fills himself up with food and is glad that none of them taste like paint, then an elf confronts Laos and he realizes they remember their brief encounters with him in the other living painting worlds, the elf believes Laos is after Delgul's throne and tries to exterminate him. Thankfully Senshi pulls Laos back to the real world, they arrive at the kitchen and Laos suggests setting up camp here, at night Chilchik tells Marcel he's departing to get some water, she tells him to stay safe, Chilchik spots a treasure bug and follows it, however due to his weight Chilchik finds himself trapped inside a room, Chilchik refuses to call for help and looks for a way to escape. After investigating the area Chilchik realizes the escape switch is near a mimic, Chilchik's unsure what to do, so he sits on a random chest which happens to be a mimic in disguise, fortunately Chilchik finds a way to flip the mimic over via another switch, despite being irritated with this discovery Chilchik notices something interesting about the treasure bug's coins writing, he quickly deciphers the writing and activates another switch. This one opens the room's door allowing Chilchik to escape and trap the mimic via the room's door, Marcel and the others stumble upon Chilchik on the ground, Laos and Senshi praise Chilchik for nabbing a mimic, Senshi whips up a meal with the mimic. Laos has a tough time getting the meat out of the mimic, so Senshi suggests they use Chilchik's picking tools, he holds Chilchik hostage so Laos can use Chilchik's tools, this is because Chilchik isn't fond of this idea, while eating Laos informs Chilchik and the others that treasure bugs are Mimic's natural enemies. Then Marcel entices Chilchik to reveal his age to the group, he informs everyone that he's 29, and to Senshi and Marcel this means he's a young boy. Later several men reviving Kabru and his party, while Kabru confronts the gentleman about it, his party members realize that most of the gear they had before they were murdered has disappeared, Kabra's anthropomorphic canine ally sniffs the area and identifies who stole his and his comrades' belongings, Kabra hands the gentleman payment for reviving them. He and his party leave to find the thieves, we cut to Marcel and the others completing their usual morning routines, after that our heroes navigate through the dungeon's fourth floor and we receive intel about the location from Senshi, afterward Marcel tells Senshi she likes using magic to help her allies walk across the water, Senshi throws a tangent because he wants to travel through this area without magical aid, Laos holds Senshi down and Marcel casts the spell on him, afterward Laos pushes Senshi into the water but he starts sinking, Marcel and Laos retrieve Senshi before he drowns. Marcel examines Senshi's hair and realizes Senshi's hair is insulated, Senshi tells Laos and the others he'll find a way to cross the water, he places a spare mimic shell in the water which summons a horse-like creature called a kelpie. Marcel's concerned but Senshi says this Kelpie is a friend of his, Laos suggests murdering Kelpie and using its guts to build a float, Laos doesn't trust Kelpies but Senshi argues that he trusts Kelpie and knows she won't harm him. Unfortunately Laos's worries come to fruition as Kelpie starts entering the water's depths with Senshi, thankfully Laos uses a rope to latch onto Kelpie's tail, while Laos and Senshi combat Kelpie, Marcel desperately tries reeling them in. Thankfully Laos and Senshi reach the surface and kill Kelpie, Senshi's shocked by Kelpie's actions but Laos had a hunch Kelpie wasn't a beast worth trusting, Senshi grabs an axe and plans to chop up Kelpie by himself, while the two prepare a dish of some kind, Chilchik questions his party's current affairs, he and Laos spot something nearby and head over to its location to investigate, Laos and Chilchik stumble upon some grain and other belongings, upon further inspection Chilchik notices that the people alongside these goods happen to be Kabru and his party members. They analyze the area further and find a spooky fish man in the river, Laos speculates that Kabru and his friends succumbed to the fish's abilities and killed each other, the two retrieve Kabru, his allies, and their belongings and place them somewhere, the two return to their group's location and notice Senshi and Marcel are still working, this convinces Laos to prepare a meal with the grain and some fishmen particles he secretly took. After Laos completes his dish he asks Marcel and Senshi to stop working and have lunch with them, Marcel finds Laos's dish satisfying, Senshi realizes Laos implemented some fishman's eggs in it upsetting Chilchik, after arguing and eating Marcel hands Senshi some special oil she made from Ant's fat. Although Marcel says its effects may not kick in immediately, Senshi convinces her to help him apply it to his hair, 
Marcel applies her water crossing magic on Senshi, unlike last time Senshi successfully walks across the water surprising his allies. After that we see our heroes combating some aquatic enemies called blade fish, during their argument several fishmen spot our heroes and plan to attack them from below. However a large crack in some of the fishmen causing the others to retreat. Senshi spots a trident and wanders over to Marcel who is busy looking up magic spells in her book. While she and Senshi wander somewhere Senshi conjures a plan involving Marcel's water crossing magic and his trident. While it's on the land Senshi rushes over to the kraken, leaps into the air and stabs the beast between its eyes with the trident, suddenly a parasite springs out of the kraken's skin. Fortunately Senshi defeats it before it can harm someone. Senshi creates a meal with the parasite and everyone finds the dish tasty, Chilchik and the others glance at the kraken and notice several fish are eating it, Leia starts having stomach problems and Senshi reveals why he's having those troubles. Additionally Senshi says the parasite in Leia's body will die over time but it will leave a hole in his stomach, Chilchik tells Marcel to apply a healing spell on Leia occasionally to prevent him from dying. Chilchik and Senshi inform her that Leia's health has improved, afterward Marcel reflects on this dungeon's design and its monsters, then we enter a school-related flashback involving Marcel. The other students are praising her because of her exceptional skills, with one of them stating that Marcel has the potential to become a court mage. Next the teacher arrives and tells the students they'll be partaking in a spirit breeding experiment, everyone heads to the darkroom to place their breeding spirit jars inside, while in the darkroom all the students flock toward Marcel and gawk over her breeding spirit's barrier. Someone accidentally shoves another student who is trying to transport their barrier to a shelf. Thankfully Marcel prevents her from falling, the girl thanks her and continues heading for the shelf. Several days pass. The teacher tells the students to re-enter the darkroom to check on their barriers to see if their spirits survive, some students' spirits died, unlike Marcel's, as for the girl Marcel assisted their teacher says her spirits multiplied a lot which impressed Marcel, Marcel rushes to the girl and asks her how she pulled it off. The girl says she visited a real dungeon that's known for having a lot of spirits, later the girl leads Marcel to a hidden passage, after they pass through this hidden passage we receive a montage of the girl and Marisol navigating toward the real dungeon, eventually they reach the real dungeon and the girl heads inside without worry. She extends her hand and persuades Marcel to join her inside, they reach a land mass that's surrounded by numerous spirits, the girl explains what she did to achieve her spirit breeding multiplier phenomenon to Marcel, Marcel examines the area and ponders if it would be great to turn this spot into a safe dungeon. Then a slime monster rises from the deep startling Marcel, the girl hands Marcel some berries, while the girl is sketching Marcel reflects on dungeon design and the species that inhabit dungeons. She realizes she must improve her dungeon knowledge if she hopes to create the dungeon of her dreams, Marcel apologizes to the girl and we learn this girl's Leia's sister Fallon, the flashback closes and Chilchik believes Marcel's backstory is full of lies angering Marcel, Leia's awakens and provides Marcel and the others with info regarding Fallon's thoughts about Marcel and the impact she had on her during their school days. Marcel blushes and tells Leia's that Fallon praised him a lot during her school days. Marcel notices she boiled a lot of water and visits the dungeon's water area to dispose of it, after she disposes of the boiled water, a water creature called an Undine rises from its depths, this creature startles Marcel causing her to fall into the water. Chilchik and Senshi take note of this and Chilchik tells Senshi they need fire to defeat the Undine, Chilchuk tells Marcel to try to handle the Undine on her own, Leos arrives and Marcel tells the others not to enter the water because their water crossing abilities have faded, Marcel concentrates and examines the area, she notices the Undine's covered in blood. She waits for it to come near her before performing an explosive spell on the water, this spell hurls her into the air but thankfully Leos captures her, noticing the Undine's gotten larger Leos and the others retreat to a safe location in the dungeon. Marcel informs our group that she's low on blood and magic and can't fully recover, while Marcel rests Leos suggests that they wait it out, Senshi and the others whip up a tasty kelpie dish. When it's complete Leos wakes Marcel up and escorts her to the food, Leos and Chilchik dig in and try different portions of the meal, as for Marcel they force her to eat the kelpie liver which gives her a small boost in energy. However she wishes they'd let her try the other meat Senshi made, Marcel passes out, then we see another party wandering the dungeon. 
One of them gets a whiff of Senshi's dish and finds it odd that another group is cooking in a place like this, it's revealed that the person questioning Leos and his comrades' actions happens to be one of their former allies. Namari Leos's former comrade greeting him and the others, Namari introduces her current employers Mr. and Mrs. Tansu and her subordinates Kaka and Kaki to Leos and the group, Leos asks Mr. and Mrs. Tansu if they have a healer in their party, Leos tries offering them kelpie meat as currency but Mr. Tansu isn't interested. Before Mr. Tansu leaves Leos warns him about the undean nearby, we cut to Mr. Tansu attempting to ward off the undean via chant, however this results in the undean murdering Namari. Also Mr. Tansu and the others flee the scene, Leos is concerned about Namari but Mr. Tansu performs a healing spell on her to replenish her, Namari confronts Mr. Tansu about using her as a shield, he promises he'll heal Marcel if Leos and Senshi assist him with this mission, as they explore an area Namari criticizes Leos and Senshi's weapon usage, suddenly Leos hears a monster in the distance, the monster grabs Kiki causing Mr. Tansu to panic. Leos says he'll confront tentacles and ask Senshi for his helmet, with help from Senshi and Namari, Leos manages to free Kiki from tentacles' grasp, our heroes regroup with Chilchik and the others. While Mr. Tansu heals Kiki's wound she sustained from tentacles Senshi approaches Leos about his numb hand, Leos asks Mr. Tansu to heal Marcel first before they heal him and Senshi, Mr. Tansu heals Marcel and Marcel thanks Namari for helping Leos and Senshi out with tentacles, Marcel believes the Undine's upset that she poured boiling water into its territory, Mr. Tansu says he and his group will return to the surface and resume their investigation later, Leos tells Marcel she should head to the surface with Mr. Tansu and the others, Marcel disagrees and tries convincing her party to let her stay with them, Namari questions Leos if he and the others can survive without Marcel's aid. Marcel begs Namari to rejoin their party and help Leos defeat the Red Dragon, Chilchik tells Marcel to abandon the notion since he knows Namari's in desperate need of funds, moreover Chilchik feels Namari's reputation will be ruined if she were to join their group. Namari tells Marcel to drop the idea of her regrouping with them as she returns to Mr. Tansu's side, then Marcel tells her allies that she knows of another way she can regain her magic, she says she must drink the Undine and says they'll need to acquire some type of heated weapon if they hope to capture it. Marcel scours the room and notices Senshi's pot, she says she could heat the pot and use it as a shield, Namari notices the pot is an adamant a special type of shield, Senshi explains why he uses it as a pot rather than a shield, Leos reminds his comrades that they also have an adamant lid. He tells Senshi that they should take the pot and its lid to trap the Undine, Leos and Senshi struggle to capture the Undine, Namari arrives and assists Senshi in capturing it, once captured she and Senshi take the adamant and place it over a campfire. Marcel swiftly grabs a mug scoops up the Undine and drinks it, Senshi suggests they whip up a meal to go along with the Undine beverage, Mr. Tansu and the others assist our heroes in gathering ingredients, Marcel insists that Mr. Tansu and his group join them for a meal. After eating Namari confronts Chilchik and is surprised he didn't leave the group before she did, Namari shares a theory about their other ally Shuro who left the group too, then before she departs with Mr. Tansu, Namari hopes Marcel and the others will survive their endeavors.